Welcome back to Woodworking with Wes. In the shop right now, we're doing a job where we're building a mitered door for the cabinets that we're doing. Part of doing a good mitered door is having a good mitered jig for your table saw. We're going to build that today. The doors that we're building for the job that we have in the shop right now have a mitered corner to the door and so we're going to build a mitered door sled. I'm going to show you how we got started on this, uh, how to build the sled part, how to make the runners, how to get it all lined up, and how to make your angle on top of it so that you cut perfect miters. We'll start at the table saw. The first thing you need to do is to make you some runner stock. Now your runner stock needs to fit down in the runner in the slots that are available on your table saw. It needs to slide easy, but it needs to be almost full size so that it doesn't slop around too much because that's what holds your jig perfect. Now I went ahead and made this little piece. That's just the leftovers of these two pieces right here. I got it cut to the right size and I made it just a little bit higher than the table itself. Um, not much, I didn't want it to be way high, I just, just high enough that my jig is going to slide. And so I put my two pieces in there. My board that I'm using is 14 by 29. I wanted my saw to be in the center, so I set my fence on my saw at 14 and a half inches. And then, what I did, I put my I put my runners in, I put my fence up against my board, and then I just nailed down two nails into my pieces that I had on here. That made my uh, table square to my saw blade and square to my runners. Once I got done with that, I turned it over and I nailed Quite a few nails on the back side here to make sure that my runners were good and tight, didn't move, and then I waxed them, made them so that they were nice and slick, cleaned them up and everything like that, sanded the corners and stuff like that so that they would ride smooth in the tracks, give me a good uh, sled, and then I put me a little handle on it. Like, all I did was take a piece of scrap lumber, cut it and sanded it so it wouldn't hurt my hands, glued it glued and nailed it along the back side and now I have a sled very simple this is easy to make slides back and forth let's lower that saw blade so we can and that's what you want in a sled something that slides back and forth holds good and straight that's where we start now um, one of the things that we want to do to get, to line up our miter is we want to find exactly where our saw cut is. So what the next step we're going to do is we're going to raise the saw blade up and we're going to make a cut that comes down here about three inches. That's the first thing we're going to do and we'll do that first then we'll go back over to the bench and get ready to build our miter. The saw blade cut in here so that we know where to line up our miter so that our corners will be perfect. I'll show you how we're going to do that when we get over to the bench. But we needed to have that saw cut so we can center our miter off of that. Okay, back to the workbench. The next step that we'll do is to create the backstop for our angle. Now I'm started by getting a perfectly square piece of wood and, and check it, make sure it's square. And uh, so we have a nice square piece of wood. What we're going to do is we're going to cut an angle off the back of it and then put the angle against our handle and lined up with our saw cut. That's why we put the saw cut is so we can line this up with a saw cut. We'll go over to our miter saw, or I mean our uh, chop saw, and we'll take a cut off the back side. The first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to mark it to make sure that I'm exactly where I want to be. We want this miter to stick out here about 10 inches. 
So let's measure back 10 inches. Give us a, this is not an exact measurement, just kind of that's where we want to be. We're going to take our square, we're going to draw us a line across there. I always check it from side to side. Okay, now we'll take this to the chop saw and cut this piece off. Okay, over here at our chop saw, we've set our chop saw at 45 degrees. We're going to put our piece in here and we're going to cut to the line that we draw in order to make our 45 degree cut. Now, I'll see if I can cut this without getting in the way too much so you can see, but that's what we're going to do right here. We've cut our angle on our chop saw. Now we're going to mount it on our sled, and that's one of the reasons that we did our little saw blade cut. We need to line that point up right to the center of our saw blade cut and tight against our fence back here. That's the first place we start. Now we'll attach this with just some nails through our board, and that will give us a perfect 45. Let's put two nails though, because we're going to check and kind of make sure we should be able to measure this distance and this distance and have them be exactly the same in order for it to be square. But let's check that first. Let's just give it a couple of nails and check our measurement. Okay, let's make sure we got our point right to the center of our saw blade cut. And then we're going to give it just a cut nail there and there. We're going to measure this distance and this distance right there tells me I'm 14 and 3 sixteenths. And this distance right there tells me I'm 14 and 3 sixteenths. We're good. Okay, let's finish nailing this down tight. Okay, that gives us our 45 and we could lay a board on there. Let's just grab a little board. We could lay a board on that, take that over to the saw, and that would give us a perfect miter. The one thing that we need to have extra on our jig is the ability to clamp a stop. And right now we don't have that. So I'll show you how we're gonna solve that. I cut a board earlier, and we're going to attach this board on here, giving us some, some extra length down both sides. We're gonna 45 it here. And that is going to allow us to have the ability to clamp a stop on our jig. So we'll make that next. We'll take it over the chop saw. We'll put a couple of 45 degree cuts in the center of it. And we'll put that together on this. And we'll just face nail it down the edge of our board. Okay, back here at the bench, we've cut our pieces for our uh, clamping cleat. We're going to be nailing those on just like this. This piece of wood that we put in here is a 10 and a half by 10 and a half, but I want you to know that this is not a critical measurement. You want it to be big enough that you have a long enough edge to give you something to mount your cleat on and have a good straight edge, but that isn't necessary for it to be an exact measurement. You could have a little bigger, a little smaller. I cut my clamping cleat two inches by a three-quarter inch piece of stock and I made it nice and long so that I can have a place to clamp my uh, stop blocks if I want. But these measurements you can adjust according to your needs and space. Um, but 10, 2, not critical, but that's what I made mine. And we're going to put this on here and we're going to face nail right through here. But first we're going to put a little glue on there. So let's put a little glue, some nails. We're going to run this up to the inside of our saw cut because we're going to trim this as we cut so that it becomes a nice smooth continual cut.
There's our first one. There's your jig. And this is how the stop block works, just like this. You'll be able to put a stop block on there and a clamp. You tighten it down. That way, if you have several cuts that are exactly the same measurement, this is a great place to put a stop block. Make sure all your measurements are exactly accurate and consistent. That's how that works. Now, we're going to take this back over to the table saw, and we're going to recut this cut right here through our stop block. And then we're going to cut a piece, see how we did. We're going to check our miter, see how we did. Absolutely perfect. You put those together like that, put it in your square, our joint is tight, our angle is square, we're good. Nice little jig. I want to thank you today for watching Woodworking with Wes. Building a jig like this, having the ability to build little jigs like this is very important because these are the things that help you to do quality work when you're doing your work. Um, always nice to be able to have a little jig like this just stashed in the corner. You can break it out, put it on your table saw, make your miter cuts, and they're perfect every time. So, thanks for watching Woodworking with Wes. Mm -hmm.